Hi guys, in this video we will create a new droplet on DigitalOcean and we will start configuring our CentOS build server. Our first goal will be quite simple, we'll install basic tools and utilities on our new server and we'll update our system and prepare everything for installing Java and Jenkins and we'll do that in the next videos. In this tutorial series we are using DigitalOcean as our main cloud platform and we'll continue with it. Feel free to use a cloud platform or a server of your choice, the main thing is that we will be using CentOS OS as our main Linux distribution, the other aspects should not really be different. However, if you haven't tried DigitalOcean yet, give it a try. I'm posting a link in the description to this video that will give you 20 bucks for free if you're signing up using that link. Alright, so now let's start. Let's go to DigitalOcean, I hope that you already have an account there, and we'll find the big green button create on top and we will need to create a droplet. So let's click droplets. Now we will need to choose what kind of droplet we will have for our build server. I'm choosing CentOS as my distribution and I'm choosing the latest version which is 7.6 64-bits. And here if I scroll down I have all this option for different plans, for different kind of servers. I don't need that beefy server for 40 bucks a month. I will go left and I'll choose for the build server, I will choose a server with 2 gigabytes of RAM. This configuration from my experience is a good start for a build server, one gigabyte version for just 5 bucks a month is a little bit too little RAM, so I would stick with a $10 version with 2 gigabytes, 50 gigabytes SSD and 2 terabytes of data transfer. Alright, now we need to choose the data center. And I'll go with the Frankfurt because this data center is now the closest to where I live. And then I will make sure that my authentication option is SSH keys because it's much more secure than the password and my key is selected. So this key that I'm using on my computer will be automatically installed on the newly created Linux distribution and I will be able to log in to that box as root. And then I will give it a, some sort of a meaningful name. The domain name that we're using for our application is nanogram.com io so i will call this droplet nano build since it will be the build server and i will want to see that as the name of a host i just need one droplet and this will be pretty much it so i'm clicking create and i will need to wait a couple of minutes for the droplet to be initialized so let's wait a couple of minutes i will pause this video and once this bar is filled we will see how to configure it further so now my droplet is ready, I will copy its IP address and I will not rush and open console and start SSHing to this droplet yet. First I will go to a networking tab of DigitalOcean and I will assign a DNS name to this droplet so that I can use a nice server name instead of IP address. I'll go to a domain called nanogram.io and now I will create another subdomain, another A record that will be called build.nanogram.io. As you see, as I type here, the text, the full name of the domain appears right below this box. Now we need to choose a droplet or insert an IP. So I'll just point it to nano build, the new droplet that I have just created, and I'll create a record. It is super fast to create a new DNS record. Updating an existing record might take a little bit longer. So now if I did everything correctly, I should be able to SSH to my new host. So I'm SSHing as root at build.nanogram.io. I trust the authenticity of this host, but we can also be a little bit more paranoid and check the fingerprints. And now I'm on my box as root. So the first thing that you do when you just created a new box, you should run yum minus y update. It will pretty much update everything without asking for additional confirmations with minus Y flag. This process might take a couple of minutes, but all the packages afterwards will be updated to the recent stable versions. All right, now the update is over and during this operation, it is possible that kernel or some of the core libraries have been updated and restart is required. To check if this is the case for us, let's run a command called needs restarting with a flag minus R. And reboot is required to ensure that your system benefits from these updates. Let's do reboot right now. Shut down. Minus R now. We're restarting our server. It will take another 30 or 40 seconds before the server is back online again. Now let's see if it is back. Let's SSH again as root. And seems it is not yet there. No, let's give it another couple seconds. Now it should be better. And we're back on our server. Now let's run this command again 
and see that after the restart needs restarting will say no core libraries or services have been updated. So it means that our server is up to date and ready for the next parts of the installation. So now let's install several essential utilities. So again, yum minus y to not ask for confirmation and let's install GCC C++. We will need it for native builds for some of Node.js modules. Then we'll install make, we'll install wget, we will get net tools, and we'll get vim, and we will need git on the server. Since this is a build server and it will be talking to GitHub, we will need git on, on the server. So now let's install those. And finally, let's not forget to install our Node.js. And to do that, I will run curl with flag silent, with flag location, and I will pass the following address, HTTPS, RPM, node source, com, then forward slash setup, underscore 12.x, then I'll do pipe and bash. This kind of command is generally quite scary to run as a root user, especially because you're just getting a script from some internet host and you're piping it to bash. So basically you're executing something that is written in this script under a root user. However, this particular script is well trusted and feel free to read the source code and check that it is indeed not doing any dodgy stuff with your computer, with your build server. Once this step is done, let's install node yum minus y install. No GS. If you did everything correctly, then node minus V should give you the version of the Node.js that you installed. In my case, it's 12.4.0. For you, it might be different Node.js version, but it should print version. One last thing that I will do with this server is I will install a repository that called EPEL Apple release. It will be required later to install additional software like Nginx, so I'll just do it right away and make sure that Apple release is installed and configured on this system. All right, so now the installation is done and this is the basics of the server setup that we already looked at in the previous video. So if you guys feel like you need a little bit more explanation, a little bit more details about those commands that I was using in this little tutorial, feel free to check the other videos from deploying node series. They explain the same concepts, but much slower and in much more details. And now our server is ready for the installation of our main software packages, which will be Java and of course Jenkins, our build automation server that we will be using to orchestrate our deployments, orchestrate our builds and make our CI CD pipeline amazing. So thank you very much for watching and don't forget to put that like if you enjoyed this video or if you found this video useful, leave your comments if you have any questions or you need help setting up your server. See you in the next video.